Let's continue with our next session and welcome Elsa Fernanda Gonzalez, full-time professor at the Universidad Autónoma de Tamaulipas, and Gladys Quevedo Camargo, professor at the University of Brasilia, and um, uh, to present with a project for with also Salomé Arenas Villa, academic researcher at Universidad Alberto Hurtado. So we have Elsa and Gladys with us. So welcome, Gladys. Welcome, Elsa. Sorry. Hello, hi. Can you hear hi. me? Yes. It's hello, Gladys. Hello. Hi, Gladys. So nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Hello. Hello, Olga. Nice to see you. Thank you, Olga, for helping us. Oops. So the floor is yours. Um, do you want me to share your presentation or? Um, I can share it. I have it here. Um, oh, perfect. Worry. So should I start sharing? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, so can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so here goes the presentation. Wonderful. There we go. Thank you very much, Fernanda. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. So Fernanda and I will present the survey, uh, only the preliminary results. Actually, uh, we've been working on the survey for some time. Uh, Fernanda, Salome, and I are part of the research committee of La Alta, La uh, Latin American Association for Language Testing and Assessment. So that's why we are we are presenting here, but actually everyone at La Alta is helping us and contributing with the survey. So um, as I said, uh, I'm, we are just going to present pre preliminary results because we are still analyzing the data we got and still collecting data actually. So this is the title of our presentation, Southern Latin Assessment Liter uh, Language Assessment Literacy in Latin America Preliminary Results. Let's move on. Well, during this talk, we are going to briefly review what uh, language assessment literacy is and discuss research, research studies focusing on uh, LLAL needs and of different stakeholders. We're also going to discuss the objective of our study, uh, our methodological approach, and our preliminary results. We're going to go through some implications of the preliminary results, and at the end, discuss the future plans we have of the study. Well, we are going to start, uh, as we all know, there is a vast literature on language assessment literacy already, so there is a lot to be studied. But we are relying uh, on two uh, very important quotations. So the first one is that language assessment literacy is a multifaceted concept and that defining it presents a major challenge. So this is true, we all know that. And that's why it's been so difficult to, to collect and analyze data. Now, the second quote we have is the importance of assessment literacy lies in that without a higher level of teacher assessment literacy, we teachers will be able to help students attain higher levels of academic achievement, right? So but by believing that, by believing in the, in the importance of language assessment literacy, um, is um, that's why we decided to devote our time to carry out this survey. Moving on. So we, in order to identify uh, language assessment literacy needs in Latin America, we relied a lot on relevant research. There is a lot of a very good text about that. We listed some here that work with different uh, stakeholders. And we, by doing this literature review, we used some of them to develop the survey that we, we are presenting today, but Fernanda will talk about the methodology of how we, we developed this, this survey uh, in a minute. But I would just like to call your attention to all these texts and also emphasize the importance of Glenn Fulcher's definition of uh, language assessment literacy that is an expanded definition and it was very, very useful to us. Now, the motivation for our survey, we, in, in our document at Lauta, we read that Lauta seeks to promote 
best practices of language assessment and testing in educational and professional contexts in Latin America. So in order to do that, to be able to promote best practices, we thought it would be essential to carry out the survey. So the survey aims at helping us to fully understand how best practices can actually be promoted and developed. We heard this morning the importance of context when uh, Professor Barry was talking. So understanding the context is very important. The problem is we have a context that consists of 33 countries, if we consider Latin America and the Caribbean, and 21 countries if we look at Latin America only. So the context is very, very complex. Now, the second motivation was that uh, the belief we have that to raise awareness of the crucial needs of ALL among language assessment stakeholders in Latin America is important as a tool to make decisions on language policy, language curriculum design, and language testing. So we wouldn't be able to do anything if we didn't have any idea of who we're talking about, where they are, what they do. So now let's go on to the study itself. Uh, so what was needed when we decided to carry out the study? So we thought that more efforts need to be conducted to understand the nature of LAL and its multiple forms in Latin American context, as I said. And we should also have or carry out an exploration of language assessment stakeholders' perceptions regarding their assessment literacy and the establishment of a common conver convergence point among language assessment trainers, decision makers, and other relevant stakeholders. Now, this study, it was uh, our aim to explore the perceptions of Latin American stakeholders in regard to their knowledge, skills, and training needs of language assessment. So we had two research questions. The first one was, what are participants' previous assessment training experiences? And the second, what are participants' perceptions of their current language assessment knowledge and their language assessment literacy needs? So based on those questions, now my friend Fernanda will go on uh, to the methodology of the study. Thank you, Gladys. Um, thank you to all for joining us today. And um, in this, we're going to try and share with you a little bit of what we did and what we still need to do. So like Gladys um, just uh, filled you in on this, we were trying, we are trying to understand what um, Latin American countries stakeholders need in terms of language assessment literacy and what they believe they know about language assessment. So uh, we followed an online survey uh, type of methodology and we adapted this survey from three, from these studies that you can see at the top of your screen. And we adapted it, why? Because, well, these studies focused on different, uh, very different contexts. For instance, Volk and Tosagari focused on European context, Carmel and Harding, well, they focused on, 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 other, um, on trying to build a construct of what language assessment literacy components are and project it onto the needs of, of stakeholders. So in Latin America, well, first of all, the languages, we needed to adapt that, and we needed to understand a little bit of what, of what um, Latin Americans understand of language assessment literacy and what they, they need. So uh, the survey had three sections. It had a background information section where we asked them about their demographic information and the previous training experience that they have had. Uh, it focused on the perceived knowledge that they believe they had. It was a 58 item linker type um, questionnaire and it focused on zero to five degree of knowledge. And the third section was the perceived needs, focused on the perceived needs of those that decided to respond. And the dimensions that we tried to focus on were language skill assessment, language proficiency frameworks, assessment uses, washback, aspects of item writing, rubrics and scoring, piloting, and item analysis. Um, we decided to focus on three languages, uh, Spanish, English, and Portuguese. 
which means that we uh, constructed the, the survey first in English, and then we went through a translation process. Once the translations were fulfilled, we went through a validation process, which included the opinion of nine experts, um, experts in fields of applied linguistics, language testers, teacher educators, and obviously language assessment researchers. And we went through two rounds of feedback. So um, nine experts um, focused on, uh, reviewed our survey, and then we worked on it, we improved it, and then we sent it out again for more feedback. Um, once, the, once this validation process was finished, uh, we disseminated the final versions of English, Spanish, and Portuguese through uh, email, through our social media, through um, associations that we have contact with, for instance, in Mexico with the Mextisol Association, in Brazil with the Brastisol Association, and so on and so on. Um, if you notice on your right-hand side, you have some pictures of what the, the survey looks like and the grid that we used for sections B and C, for instance, where the respondent had one question, how would you rate your knowledge and understanding of? And for instance, how foreign and second languages are learned? And the respondent would choose no knowledge, little knowledge, average knowledge, good knowledge, and very good knowledge. So uh, the collection of information is still not finished. We are still trying to collect information. But we decided to analyze information descriptively so that we, because precisely because we're still not finished, but we managed to analyze 532 responses with descriptive statistics. And we focused on the tendencies found, for instance, most knowledgeable areas, the less knowledgeable areas, and the most relevant needs. So here is what we found. Um, like I said, we had 532 respondents. 132 people decided to answer in Spanish because we gave them the option. We, um, we sent out the emails and we in this email, we included the three links so that the person could decide what language they would like to answer in. So 308 people decided to answer in English while 92 people decided to answer in Portuguese. We had 372 females, 160 males. So overly, we had females participating in this study and their age ranged from 20 years old to 77 years old. Um, as you can see in the graph, 66% of our um, participants were language teachers and 20% of our respondents were language teacher educators. We had 31 respondents, which was around 6% of, um, of the sample um, was, were test assessment researchers. We also had policymakers, which were 20 people, and we had test assessment developers, which were 19 respondents. Um, where we also asked them where they they are from originally and we decided to focus and we also asked them about their place of work their current place of work so we focused on people that were um fulfilling their teaching researching or other language assessment um services jobs functions in latin america so most of our respondents as you can see are from chile there are 36% of our respondents, which equals to 181 respondents. And we had a great majority, lots of people also from Brazil, which with 111 respondents, and 14% were from Mexico. We also had people from Colombia with 11% of our participants, um, Chile, Argentina, Panama, Cuba, El Salvador, Venezuela, Honduras, Nicaragua, San Jose, Uruguay, and Ecuador. Okay, in terms of their assessment literacy experiences, um, most of I them, get that. most of them again? got, I'm sorry, most of them had 
um, experience um, in terms of, of language assessment training. Um, we focused on general education assessment training and language assessment training. So 23% of our participants said they didn't have any type of training previous in terms of language assessment literacy, while 20% um, said they had no training at all, even in general education assessment. Now, this training, the people that responded that they did actually receive some type of training, most of them re have received it while they are in service. That is, um, while they are working and their work jobs or work institutions provided them with some type of assessment training. 26% of our respondents stated that they had received their training it pre to their service and 30% responded they had obtained it from postgraduate courses. So as you can see, most of the people that have answered the survey up to today have received some type of assess language assessment training during their job and their in-service. So um, in terms of their knowledge, what um, did they report? About language assessment, it was very interesting to see that they, their respondents felt they had good knowledge about how foreign languages are learned. They also felt that they knew how skills are developed, skills referring to reading, listening, writing, and speaking. So, and 151 people believed that they had very good knowledge. And these were the, the items that had the, the, highest, the highest rate in terms, of, um, in terms of frequency. As you can see, their standard deviation is also quite um, close to the mean, which means that they had an actually quite well dispersed. Um, in terms of the least known, the, um, what our participants felt they know less about, um, the, the item that had the, the most uh, less knowledgeable percentage was how to accommodate candidates with disabilities or other learning impairments. It seems that um, we, in Latin America, we feel we, we don't know very much about this. We don't know how to attend or help people during language assessment that have special needs. And it seems that people feel they know less about how to consistently measure the performance of test takers. Now, in terms of their needs, um, this is what we found. It's, it seems that the majority of those that responded our, our survey believe that they need to understand or know more about how language assessment can be used in social policies, for instance, immigration or citizenship. And they also feel they need to know more about how language ass assessment can impact society. So as you can notice, there is a big social component in terms of what um, our respondents feel they don't know or they know less about and what they feel they need in terms of language assessment. And it, it seems that um, they, also, they also feel they need to know more about how to adopt, sorry, how to adapt um, appropriate ready-made assessments. In other words, for instance, how teachers can adapt to their classroom or and to their students um, assessment that is already out there, for instance, on the internet and how to adapt it to their specific needs and their specific context. And I'll hand it back to you, Gladys. Thank you. Thank you, Fernanda. Um, so maybe we should now talk about quickly about the discussion parts because it's uh, we, we are running uh, short of time. So Latam stated to know more about languages learned, less about how to attend candidates with disabilities during a test. And how, I think this is something you have said already, right? Maybe you should move on, right? Other tendencies found, how to assess vocabulary and the different levels of proficiency. You have said that already, right? Yeah, yeah, good. 
Okay, go ahead. So the needs, overall attempts stated to need to learn more about impact of assessment on social policies and society, more classroom-centered approaches, learn more about adapting ready-made assessments, other tendencies that were found, we need to learn how to assess grammar, need to understand how assessment can impact the classroom and classroom teaching and learning. So these are the needs that we identified. Now, moving on to limitations. Uh, well, the first limitations is underrepresentation. So countries such as Panama, Ecuador, Nicaragua, Honduras, Cuba, El Salvador, among others, were underrepresented. We had only one to six respondents so more outreach is needed, and we hope this, this event, this Congress helps us with that. Now, number two, it was the survey format. So these results only included those projected on a Likert scale type response. So open-ended responses still need to be analyzed to understand more about the contextual needs of Latin American stakeholders. And uh, related to that, questionnaire is a limited view of needs in Latin America, and we need more qualitative data to understand the context much better. Then our future plans for the project, we are, want to work towards more outreach in underrepresented countries, which is our biggest difficulty. So the survey will be open for three more months for others to respond. Uh, it, our plan is also to analyze knowledge and needs under the eye of each country represented in the data. So go a bit deeper in that. And number three, according to findings, design and provide training, conferences, talks, etc., to the Latin American stakeholders to further raise awareness of uh, language assessment and its major role in language policy, language program design, language testing, and language teaching. Actually, we have been doing that in our countries uh, under our possibilities. Now, for this purpose, we invite relevant organizations language testing agencies and or, or language educational institutions to team up with us to fulfill this purpose. So we thank you very much. Uh, and I would like to show as well the links for our, our survey. It's in, on the next slide. Uh, so we'll be releasing them again for, for responses. And uh, we thank you very much, and we show our references in the next slide. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Elsa and Gladys. Let's see if we have any questions from the audience. OK, so anything that you'd like to add? Okay, I think that um, like so far, I think we don't have many questions. Maybe you'd like to share the links to the survey in the chat. I yeah. Think that could, yeah. Yeah. We, we'd also like to, to say that, uh, you know, we do need contact with people from underrepresented countries. So we're looking forward to being contacted by these people, by these countries, so that we can, you know, expand the survey and be more representative. So thank you very much, Olga. Nice. And now we have two questions. So um, I'm going to add them here. So Isadora Moraes um, wants to congratulate you. And she wants to know, have you thought about how you will be analyzing the open-ended answers yet? Hi, Isadora. Hi. Thank you so much for your question. Uh, and we are still um, analyzing how to actually do that because we have all types of the questionnaire included, the survey included uh, one open-ended question. And from there, I believe our plans is to, those who are interested to contact them personally and conduct a survey to understand their specific context. But we, we still haven't gotten to that part of deciding what specific approach in terms of qualitatively answering the, the, this open-ended question. But we would love to hear any insight that any of you have or any suggestions. Obviously, we're very open to it. Thank you, Isadora. Nice. Now we have a question from Barrio Sullivan. He would like to know what is the percentage of response approximately? Wow. 
Um, oh, we cannot hear you, Elsa. Sorry, Elsa. sorry. It's okay. Sorry. Um, well, we up to now we had 532 responses. We actually sent it out to. We I don't have the exact number of how many emails we sent it out to. So I'm um, sorry, I don't have that data right now, but um, I would very happily be able to, to comply it and share it with you in terms of the percentage of response and from the total amount of the population. Nice, thank you. And we also have a question from Aisha Amira um, Sainal. And it's, um, do you plan to provide a prescriptive LAL profile of the teachers? Hi, thank you for your question. Yes, I think we do need to um, to do that because to actually understand the context of, of the people that are responding, um, we need to provide a profile. So um, we cannot just not um, pay attention to that and try and understand their responses and their needs. So yes, we do, we do intend to do that obviously in the future. Thank you. Nice, awesome. Okay, so I just added the chat, the links to the public chat and then, so yes, I think that yes, that, that would be like really um, welcomed. Um, does anybody have any other questions? Okay, so thank you very much, Elsa and Gladys. <laughs>